So you want to pack clothes that are you, not clothes that are the you that you want to be when you're on vacation. Okay. Hello everybody, it's Jen. Welcome back. I'm getting ready for another trip, kind of starting to organize my bags, figuring out what I'm taking, and more importantly, figuring out what I am not taking. And that is what we're going to talk about today. Things I never pack, and I'm really glad that you're here. So as we are aware, I like to film videos about packing and travel. If you're into that kind of thing, you have come to the right place. I talk about it, some would say ad nauseum, but I find it very helpful to be packed in a way that helps me to have a better vacation. And I have a lot of fun sharing those tips and tricks with you guys. So we spend a fair bit amount of time on this channel talking about traveling well. To me, packing light means I travel better. It means I feel a little more organized. I feel a little more in control when situations are uncontrollable. And it just, I don't know, it's like a comfort thing for me to know that I have packed well, that I have packed things that I actually need, and also that I can carry everything myself. I travel by myself quite a bit, including the trip I'm getting ready to go to. I'm meeting a friend once I get on board the ship, but I'll be traveling to my destination solo. And I don't have you know, like a crew carrying my stuff around. So it's important that I only pack what I absolutely need. Number one thing that I don't pack, and that is too many shoes. Now, Samantha Brown literally just talked about this on Instagram today. I promise I am not copying her with this video. I had this video planned out for like a month. So, you know, maybe she copied me. I don't think so. I love Samantha Brown, adore her, but she talks about this a lot. I used to pack too many shoes. Now I pack two or three pairs of shoes and that's it. The only time I would make an exception is like if I were traveling to like a wedding or something that required really formal shoes. But by and large, I am only taking two to three pairs. My favorites right now are my Kariyumas. The reason I love these is they're cute with skirts, they're cute with dresses, I can wear them on the airplane and they just wear really, really well. They're super comfortable. Cariumas is a fantastic brand. Their sustainability rating is off the chart. Ethical sourcing checks all of the boxes. They plant trees every time you buy a pair of their shoes. They're amazing. So there you go. My Cariumas, I this is my third pair, I believe. They wear great, great arch support inside, and I absolutely love them. So I will pack one pair of tennis shoes. By the way, I also, these double for my exercise shoes. If you're like a runner, you probably wanna pack separate running shoes, um, but I'm just a walker on vacation especially, so these work great for both every day and then also for exercising. The other pair of shoes that I will always take is a pair of either flats or sandals of some sort that will be good for things that are a little more elevated where maybe tennis shoes isn't appropriate. For this upcoming cruise, I'll be taking these little black Lifestride strappy sandals. Um, I don't ever wear heels, so that's another thing I never pack when I travel. I never pack heels. It's really important to me that shoes when I travel be super comfortable. These are fantastic. I bought these on Amazon. I will definitely link them below. I think they were all of $60. I actually have them in two colors. I have them in kind of a, um, like a nude color and also I have them in black. So these are really great uh, for cruises, for wearing with nicer dresses or whatever. Also bonus, they pack up really flat like that. So these are really cute. And then I always pack a pair of flip-flops. Now I neglected to take these on my last trip. I only took my Tory Burch flip-flops and the spa on the ship we were on did not have flip-flops. So you really want these like if you're in a thermal suite or the rainforest room or whatever. So I always take my little Javianas as well. And then these also double for the beach. So you may have some other strappy sandals that you like or whatever, but I really like to stick to two to three pairs of shoes. And one of those pairs is my flip-flops and one of those pairs are the ones that I'm wearing on the airplane, which means I'm really only packing one additional pair of shoes in my suitcase. Do I have to really plan in advance to make sure I have appropriate footwear for everything I'm taking? Absolutely. Is it worth it to me? 100%. So I never pack too many shoes. Okay. Another thing I never pack when I go on vacation is to, I don't know why I have my sunglasses out. I, I'll put those on my head. They keep my hair back anyway, <laughs> um, is too many valuables. Anything that is really, really precious to me, 
I am leaving at home. That includes things like really, really high-end handbags, really expensive jewelry, unless I'm physically wearing it on my person. I'll usually take like my nice watch or, you know, a, a few of my nicer pieces, but I'm actually wearing them. I never pack that stuff in my luggage for a couple of different reasons. Number one, I don't want to lose it because it's if it's really valuable to me and I would be devastated and I couldn't replace it, I really don't want to travel with it. Um, also, you don't want to be a target. So if you are someone who owns really, really high-end designer bags, you might want to consider leaving those at home. There has been a lot of theft of late in various places. Um, I know a lot of people I know that live in big cities people I know, people I watch on YouTube um, that have really expensive handbags have started sticking them inside of like a little pliage or something when they're out and about so as not to make themselves a target. And I just feel like really valuable items are best left at home. So, you know, you are you may have your own little feeling on that. Maybe you love your expensive items. You want to travel with them. For me personally, it is one more thing for me to worry about and I just really don't want to bother with that. Having said that, um, this little bag I just got. Okay, so if you watched my last weekly vlog, you heard me talking about my Gucci bag that my dad bought me in the 1980s that had gone missing. I found it on Poshmark. So this bag may or may not come with me. This is not hugely expensive. Um, it, it is very old. Um, it is from the 1980s. For those of you that asked, um, I showed it on Instagram if I got it authenticated. I didn't. It was less than $400. Um, it, it does check all the boxes of authentication. By the way, this has nothing to do with this video. So if you're like, why is she talking about a Gucci bag when she just said to leave your really high-end handbags at home? Because I wanted to show off that I found this on Poshmark and it's my YouTube channel. <laughs> so there you go. Ta-da! Okay, so um, it passed all the check marks. There was a really couple of really great videos that I watched about like Gucci handbag authentication. Also, remember, I owned this bag in the 80s, so I knew what it was supposed to look like. And guess what? This one looks just like that. Um, even down to, you ready? Velcro has a little Gucci made in Italy. It has the old school serial number. They don't do the serial numbers like this now, but they did in the 1980s. Your girl did her homework um, and I'm just so happy with it. It's just a little clutch. Um, a couple people online had added like little brads and then the D-rings to make this a crossbody. But one of the things I love about it is that it's an old school clutch. So I may take this, but you know, I don't think my beat up 1980s vintage Gucci bag really counts as like a super high end bag. If you've got a like a Birkin, a Lady Dior, whatever, I, if it were me, I would not be taking that stuff on vacation. That's just me. But yeah, leave your really, really valuables safely at home. Okay, the next thing that I never pack on vacation, trying to grab, got a bag, I can get it, is too many toiletries. Now, here's the thing with this. Whether you are checking a bag or whether you are not, everything you take you have to keep track of when you're on your trip. So like if you're on a cruise and you only have a little bit of counter space in a tiny little cruise bathroom, you don't want to have a huge toiletry kit. It's just, it's to me, I, I keep saying you, you should do whatever you want. For me, I don't like to have a ton of toiletries in the stateroom, in the hotel room, whatever. I like to keep things really simple. So everything that I am taking for this next trip in terms of toiletries is in this liquids bag, this cosmetics bag, and then this little emergency medicine bag. Now the little emergency medicine bag um, is separate because I like to be able to throw this like inside a day bag or whatever. This just has my Advil, my lactate, um, it has some Alka-Seltzer, it has Band-Aids, it has things like that. Um, so just tiny, little tiny, doesn't need to be like an entire medical store. Usually anywhere you travel is gonna have medicine all over the world. Um, also, this is my liquids bag. I get so much grief about this liquids bag because yes, it is a little large. I do have TSA pre-check, so I never have to take my liquids bag out in the US. When I travel overseas, it depends on the airport. Anymore, a lot of the big airports have the scanners that are scanning for the amount of liquid, so they don't necessarily need you to take your bag out. Having said that, I always put it in this bag anyway. This bag I have never been questioned about. It is is about like two inches too tall. I've had it in Japan. I've had it in Mexico. I've had it in Greece. I've had it in Italy. 
I've had it all over the United States. Have never, ever, ever, ever had a problem. I will link it below. It says on their thing that is TSA pre-check approved. There really is no such thing. I don't know if y'all know this, but the TSA doesn't actually like give a stamp of approval to various bags. They just don't. Also, except for Heathrow, don't get me started, the agents are not measuring your bag. So if you're in the ballpark, you're usually going to be safe. Having said that, they're also not going to like throw you in jail. If you have packed something that does not, isn't compliant with the liquids rule, it, it, you, they just take it from you. Like it, it isn't like, you know, you get in, in massive trouble or it's an international incident or something. So anyway, I love this particular liquids bag. It probably needs a little clean out, but I love it because of the way that it unzips. And I just feel like it's super convenient to get stuff in and out of, and I love the shape of it. Um, so yeah, your experience may vary. Is this like officially one liter? No, it's slightly over. Have I ever had an issue? No, so that's all I have to say. Okay, another thing I never pack when I go on vacation is too much makeup. Um, I am not a huge makeup girly anyway. If you are, and that's something that makes you feel more comfortable, by all means, you know, as I've said multiple times already in this video, pack whatever you want to make you feel more comfortable. For me, um, this is all I need. And this is basically all of my, um, I've got my pill case in here. I have my little foldable hairbrush in here. Um, and then all of like my mascara and things like that. Technically, yes, mascara is a liquid, but you know, whatever. Um, and then also I have this little, um, subtle stacks. I love this brand. Um, it has everything that you need. You can actually customize your own little set. And then let me show you, they just like the top has a little mirror and then it just has lip and cheek, lip balm and eyeshadow. So this is much more convenient than taking all of the bigger sizes of things. Super happy with this, not sponsored, not affiliate, but it really has helped me cut down on what I need to take cosmetics wise. And again, just, just take the basics. Don't feel like you have to take every, you know, eyeshadow color you have, every lipstick color you have, take some neutral colors, some neutral things you can wear every day. And for me, it just makes things feel more streamlined, more just cohesive. I'm not having to think too much because I really want my focus to be on the vacation, not on, you know, which eyeshadow goes with this dress that I brought or whatever. So yeah, that's really all I'm taking for a week long trip in terms of cosmetics. And you know, the one thing that I will say I generally tend to buy when I get to my destination is sunscreen uh, because I generally don't check a bag. I never say never. Sometimes I check a bag and I need a lot of sunscreen if I'm going to a beach destination. Generally, I find like if we're going to Hawaii, I like to wait until we get there so I can buy the reef safe stuff it tends to be less expensive there than it is here in the US. So yeah, sunscreen is one of those things I'm very happy to buy once I get to my destination. So the other thing that I never pack when I go on vacation is uh, anything uncomfortable. And we need to have a conversation about this. I realize that a lot of you get very excited. You buy new outfits for vacation and all of the things. And I actually think that is fabulous. You should do that. You should feel your best self. You, you've saved a lot of money. You've taken time off work to go on vacation or go on the adventure or whatever it is. But just make sure that you feel really comfortable in the clothes that you're wearing. I never pack anything that I'm having to pull at or tug at, anything that requires a great deal of shapewear to make me look good. I want to be able to move in my clothes to fully enjoy the trip. You need to figure out what style works for you and go with that. And let me give you an example. Maybe you are someone who rocks a strapless mini skirt black dress and that is something that you really feel your true authentic self in. By all means, take that on vacation. I would feel extremely uncomfortable in a dress like that here at home, on vacation, wherever. I don't become a different person just because I'm on vacation. And no matter what you're wearing, if you're constantly pulling at it, tugging at it, if it doesn't fit you well, if you don't feel confident in it, it's not the outfit for you. So I never pack clothes that make me feel uncomfortable. Um, I have talked about this before. I have a lot of anxiety. I have a lot of anxiety in general, and I have a lot of anxiety as a traveler. So having comfortable clothes on just from a sensory 
point of view really helps me travel better. Um, this outfit that I'm wearing today, a couple of you mentioned it in my last weekly vlog. When I say I've worn it like six times since I got it two weeks ago, I keep pulling for it over and over again. It's from Spanx, it's the Air Essentials. I have the sleeveless um, one piece in this and I bought the two piece set. So soft, so cozy, so put together. I wore it to the dentist a few days ago and the woman told me I looked very chic. Um, and yet I just feel really, really myself. So you wanna pack clothes that are you, not clothes that are the you that you want to be when you're on vacation, okay? If you don't know what that is, if you do not know your personal style, we're gonna be talking about that more in the upcoming weeks. Not because I feel like I'm such an expert on fashion, I'm not, but I have developed my own personal style. And I think everyone deserves to have clothes in their closet that represent who they really are and that they feel really comfortable in. And the only person that needs to feel good about what you're wearing on your body is you. And I don't think we talk about that a lot, especially for women that are, you know, over 40. We talk a lot about what's, um, and when I say we, I don't mean me, but people talk a lot about what's in style and is this in, or is that in, or is that out, or is whatever out. You're the one that has to walk around in your clothes. So you're the one that has to feel great about what you're wearing. And if you try to wear clothes that are somebody else's personal style, it just never works. It doesn't matter how in style it is. You have to develop that own sense of personal style. So anyway, that video will be coming in the coming weeks, but I especially think that attitude is super important when you're picking your clothes for vacation. So, okay, that's all I have to say about that. Those are the things I never travel with. I hope you found this helpful. My next trip is coming up in just over a week. I cannot wait. I will bring you the vlogs from that trip whatever you're doing today. I hope you're finding joy. Oh, and as always, this video is being brought to you by my amazing patrons. As you've probably noticed, don't do a lot of sponsored videos. Don't talk about a lot of brands around here. That's because of my patrons. So if you enjoyed this video today, you can thank a patron. And if you'd like to join us for exclusive videos, live streams, all kinds of fun, go to patreon.com slash Jen LaForge, and I'll see you over there. All right, I'll see you next Friday. Bye.